Harry Potter TV series due to hit max in 2026. Everything we know about the cast, what J.K. Rowling says, and more update. Let's see. Uh, shit out of here. Uh, CEO David Zaslav confirmed Friday that a long-planned Harry Potter series is aiming to debut on Max in 2026. The target date had previously been 2025 or 2026. We've not been shy about our excitement about Harry Potter, Zaslav told the Wall Street uh, analyst on the company's fourth quarter earnings call. I was in London a few weeks ago with Casey uh, Bloy, CEO of HBO, and Channing, uh, chairperson of Warner Brothers Television, and we spent real time with JK and her team, uh, and he in, he's enthused. Both sides just thrilled to be reigniting the, this franchise. Our conversations were great. Oh, man, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not happy about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that JK is involved... Um, I see at it's, it's max streaming event in 2023 of, of April Warner Brothers Discovery confirmed a new era is coming for Harry Potter fans. The company announced a TV series based on all seven books about the boy wizard written by JK. Uh, see below for the most current uh, in new max original series. We'll dive a we'll deep dive into, sorry, dive deep into each of the iconic books that fans have continued to enjoy for all these, all these years. I see a chairman and CEO of HBO Max content about the project, uh, which also assured fans that would be a faithful adaptation. Hmm. Faithful, huh? Are they going to be if, white? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, though, right? Uh, J.K. Rowling is involved in it, but she does have. She did already change. They swapped some characters already in the past, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I believe uh, they they've done it child. to Hermione. Yeah, Hermione Hermione might have been black. I'm not 100 percent sure, but like, we'll see what's gonna happen. Because if it's a faithful adaptation to the books, then yeah. Uh, but who knows, man? See, early reports had each season of the series focusing on one of the books in Harry Potter book series, which consists of seven novels. But the ploys said that the project would run for ten consecutive years which would deem to defy the one-to-one -one book uh, assertion. For those who say that Fantastic Beasts would be leveraged to provide 10 seasons over 10 years, uh, WBD Brass said specifically during an announcement that FB will not be part of the series. Whatever the case, Bloys promised that the company embarks on its new Harry Potter adventure. We do so with the full care and craft of the franchise. So who's creating? I just want to go through it. Let's see. Martha Hillier, Kathleen Jordan, Tom Moran, Michael Leslie, amongst everything else. Let's see. Um, I want to see if JK is going to be heavily involved. Uh, JK and her team. Let's see. Let's put Rowling. Uh, okay, there's more Rowling. See the little project. Okay, Rowling. Understood. Okay, here. We heard that the group of writers were comp uh, commissioned by Max to create pitches for the series reflecting their take on the IP of, of Rowling. And understood to be involved to be pitching process. Oh, they're going to be pitching their uh, their stuff. Okay. Let's see. Uh, in late 2023, the top choices were expected to go on the next round of in the UK, potentially meeting with JK herself. Oh, man. So basically, yeah, she's going to be involved in it pretty heavily. Since it's going to be a TV show, especially TV shows, there's going to be have more heavily uh, involved. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because uh, a lot of people are actually not happy. Right. Um, so this, let's go ahead and, uh, and I'll bring some stuff from X. Okay. Whoever did this clearly understood how bad JK Rowling would get going forward. This is from June 2020 in Edinburgh, Scotland, where Harry Potter author JKR famously resides and where her handprints are cast in stone. Is that period blood? <laughs> Uh, oh man, these guys are fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, so over here, just from the Rowling Library, said we can't wait to share a decade of new stories with fans around the world on Max. We're aiming to debut in 2026. Uh let's see, we've not been shy about our excitement. The last film was made more uh more than a dozen years ago. I was in London a few weeks ago with Casey. Uh, Channing, of course, and then he said that, uh, and Zaslav were talking to JK, which is what we read earlier. Now, uh, let's go ahead and see what JK wrote earlier this year. 
um, earlier, sorry, earlier this week. Is this week? Yeah. And we talked about it on side scrollers a little bit, right? About JK Rowling and stuff. So I'm going to read her, uh, her Twitter, her Twitter post she made earlier this week. The trans activist outrage that ensues on here whenever I share my belief that jailed women should not be used as validation tools or emotional support props for trans identified male sex offenders is as revealing as it's predictable. Such activists can't bring themselves to concede that a man who was convicted of harming a woman or a girl or woman or girls uh, ought not to be incarcerated with the same demographic to whom he is proven a danger. Uh, because if they do all their stock arguments, no sexual predator would bother to pretend to be trans. No trans woman has ever harmed a woman in the woman's only space. There is no danger in making all single sex spaces unisex or exposed as the lies they are. If they admit that even a single man isn't a woman because he says he is, the entire edifice of gender identity ideology crumbles. This leaves activists who rely on bullying and slogans with nowhere to go, but you hate all trans people. So you're all saying that all trans people are rapists. And of course, uh, you are causing a trans genocide. Uh, before I continue, uh, what do you think about what she's saying so far in terms of like, uh, you know, men being in women jails and shit like that? Men being in women's jails. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's. I think she's on point when it comes to how these people rationalize. Like the 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 moment that you corner them constructively and rash, in a, the easy rash your reasoning, in a way that makes sense through logic, they're going to use that, that those phrases. She, oh, you're just a bigot. Oh, you're just a trans hater. So it doesn't really help anyone that they resort to that kind, those kinds of statements or personal attacks. Yeah, Chris Chris Gore also mentioned this a bit back when we had him on. Like, so hard to have a dialogue with these people because that's that's how it's always going to end. No matter how how you try not to be offensive, you're just trying to stick your points on a, on a constructive manner in a way. That hopefully, they can understand. They just don't want to because they just want. They just want to say, "Oh, our, our, we are correct. We are, we are absolutely correct, and you are wrong. And there's no way for you to say otherwise." So that mm. doesn't really foster a way to, for us to move forward as a society if we keep, uh, if we keep concluding that way. That's why the issue could keep permeating and permeating over the years. Which, yeah, that's how I I feel about it. About in terms of the this issue on transgender lgbtq and all, all the things that they are actually fighting for yeah I, I i think i got most of what you said i know you're like you're you sound like a little, a little robot from time to time but overall like I, I i i think i heard what you said but yeah i think it's um you cannot be fully on their side like you can't it's because if you if you step if you step out of line even just a little bit they're yeah. gonna chastise you it's going to be freaking yeah. crazy, man. Let's see. Uh, let's continue. In this particular issue also causes uh, conniptions because it threatens the activist's self-image. These are people who preen themselves on their kindness and virtue, so acknowledging the truth that they're indifferent to vulnerable women being assaulted or traumatized, threatened uh, the idea that they, ha uh, they have of themselves. Uh, they therefore double down. The prisoners complaining aren't really afraid of rape or voyeurism or violence at all. They say they're not exactly delicate flowers, as one self-identified empath put it. If support putting violent and sexual predatory men into women's prisons, you are knowingly forcing those women to live in fear. And in some proven cases to suffer the abuse of many of them that will have endured pre-incarceration. It, uh, you are not kind. You're not righteous. Women have basic human rights not to suffer cruel and unusual, uh, unusual punishment. Now, Gray, did you know that I believe it's here in California or somewhere else, these crazy leftist states, there was a man that identified as a woman. Uh, he was put in jail. 
And within a month or two months time, he impregnated all the women in his area, in his basically block cell. Crazy. Or his cell block, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's freaking crazy. Yeah. Let me find that. Let me find that thing. Okay, not not all of them. Uh, two. So, New, okay, New Jersey. New Jersey trans prisoner who impregnated two inmates transferred to men's facility after. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, it's it's uh, like, of course, me, I'm being fucking dramatic and shit. Like, I'm saying all of them. But the thing is that if you have this happen here, it's going to happen, right? Even Dave Chappelle made a joke about it. He's like, if, he said, if I'm going to go to jail, I would want to be in jail in California, right? And then whenever they said that, oh, you're going to be sent to jail, he's like, I'm going to say I identify as a woman. And then I'm going to, uh, I, and, and then when I get over there, it's like, when I get into the the, the, the woman's uh, uh, cell block, I'd be like, shut up and suck on the stick. <laughs> uh, shut up uh, and suck on this woman, uh, woman dick I got here, right? So it's basically that. And the thing is that we're saying that as a joke, but this shit actually happened. It happens. Is, it happens. Yeah. 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 This, ha this happened last year. Yo, Lost Tales says, uh, all right, got to go. Have a good night, y'all. Better later, lame tube chat. <laughs> Yo, take it, uh, take it easy, Lost Tales. Take it easy, man. But yeah, it's it's pretty nuts um, what, what's happening over there. So um, now, did you did you see what she wrote uh, last year, right? She basically uh, posted this, right, over here. Uh, let me share this one over here. How do you sleep at night knowing you have lost a whole audience from buying your books? I read my most recent loyalty checks and find the pain goes away pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is the last year you have Nerd Rotic, uh, Critical Drinker, and man, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty damn crazy. Yeah, she, she to be honest, she like we talked about it. She has fuck you money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the people who are like, oh, I'm never going to watch. <gasps> Harry Potter ever again. I'm not going yeah. to read the books. I'm going to um cross out and rip off your names in my Harry Potter books because I hate you. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's, it keeps saying it's it's only going to get worse for them if this is how they reason reason out or express their uh opinions on things. Like rather than having to listen on what our side has to say, right? It's like it's yeah, it's only going to get worse. And the moment they say they say, Oh, you gotta boycott it. Oh, yeah, uh, let's see what let's see what happens. And you're gonna tell us to boycott the, the incoming show. Let's see what's gonna happen to it. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.